It's hockey season. I'm the Prez. There's only one team I care about in all sports. Feel free to guess what it is. Oh my God, am I excited? Oh my God. I bet every sport in the world. I bet soccer. I bet rugby. I bet baseball. I bet football. I bet basketball. But I only care about two things. My guns and hockey, baby. Oh, oh. it means it's getting cold. I'm just pumped up. Today's show, the NHL preview show, we're doing the Western Conference with Buster Sports, the number one NHL handicapper at Wager Talk and Sports Memo last year. We'll talk to him about that. And of course, my dear friend, the man who wears nothing but hockey shirts, Alex B. Smith from SportsMemo.com. I want to bring them both in and we'll get the show on the road. Oh my God. Buster, take it off. Take it off. Buster! Prez, I told you that, you know what? E even though they're not the best of clubs these days, I was at least alive when they won a Stanley Cup. I was actually in Montreal in 1993. I believe... 67's Toronto, correct? And I believe that you were even born then. Is that correct? <laughs> I have to listen to this shit from Carmine Bianco all the time, and he's a freaking Buffalo Sabre fan. That's We've right. got 11 right. cups. He's got zero, and I need to hear his garbage regularly. Speaking of which, Carmine Bianco and Andrew McGinnis will be on the Eastern Conference preview show. Both shows will be up at Wager Talk TV. Uh, and today we're gonna do the Western Conference. Alex, I, I gotta tell you guys a, a story about uh, Montreal fans in two seconds. But dude, how are you, man? I missed you this summer. Yeah, I know. It's been, it seems like it's been a super long time, even though it's only been, what, maybe like 10, 11 weeks since hockey ended. But uh, yeah, glad to be back on. And uh, Buster, you know, we talked the other day. I'm glad to, to have you on with the show too. It's just, just you know, it's always great. It's a time of year where, Thanks, you Alex. know. Thanks, Alex, appreciate that. Yeah, stay glued to the couch and uh, make some money, you know, watching some of the best sports in the world and nothing better than watching some hockey when it gets cold. Yeah, and hopefully we can find a bet like that Chicago first period under again where we could just ride, baby, ride for like... The, the, the over. Yeah, the, the under, the over. over. Yeah. yeah. Um, guys, this is how this is going down. Uh, Buster Sports and Alex B. Smith, we're talking the Western Conference. Today we're going to look at each division and uh, whether there's any value in betting them. We're going to talk about the teams and what we expect uh, to happen throughout the season. And then we're going to jump into the conference to see if there's any sort of future bets for the conference winners as well. Uh, after that, uh, we've got puck time, and it starts next week. First night of hockey, I think, is Tuesday. Is that correct, Alex? Actually, October 2nd, that'll be Wednesday night. There's four games on the dot. Four games Wednesday. That'll be the next puck time show. And... Uh, we're going to be rotating guests. There's going to be five guests throughout the season. Alex B. Smith will be with us uh, most of the time, probably four days a week. Uh, Buster will join us one day. Carmine Bianco will join us one day. Uh, Dave Koken will join us one day. And Andrew McGinnis as well. Um, before we get into that, real quick story, uh, Buster. This literally is a true story, and it literally happened two days ago. So my kid went to a bar mitzvah, and at bar mitzvahs, if they dance, the DJs hand out prizes. So she came out home with a Montreal Canadiens towel. So I went to the gym, and I took my Montreal Canadiens towel, and I had a sauna. I can imagine. And then I had a shower, and then I came out wearing my Montreal Canadiens towel. And I'm not kidding you, there was probably a 70-year-old man who was wearing a Montreal Canadiens shirt, a Montreal Canadiens hat, and get this, I've never seen it before in my life. Montreal Canadian shoes. Yes, shoes. The wow. actual wow. shoes were designed in the color of Montreal Canadians and had that really ugly C and H on the right side. So the man <laughs> says to me, Hey, hey, great towel. And I look at him and I clearly know he's a Montreal Canadiens fan. And I said, Yeah, I couldn't think of anything better to wipe my ass with. 
<laughs> I do. Uh-huh. I kind of knew you were going yeah. there with yeah, that. <laughs> that is, and that is that is an honest to goodness true story. The <laughs> only reason why I don't believe it is true, Prez, is because you're a diehard Leaf fan, and me being a diehard Montreal fan, no other team would come on this body. No other, no, no other team. It's Montreal, and Montreal only. So I cannot ever see you wearing a Toronto. I uh, mean, a Montreal anything. It'd be Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Buster, I swear to God, on my life, on my kid's life, that is a true story, word for freaking oh. word. But you have to understand, dude. I'm wearing the towel. It dries my ball sack. It cleans my <laughs> butthole. There is no chance I would oh. let myself do that with a with a Toronto Maple Leaf uh, jersey. <laughs> Alex, I know you're wearing a Chicago uh, Blackhawks jersey, and I'm okay with that. That's correct. They're not in our conference. I wish them nothing but the best. Plus, they're a team the Leafs are modeling themselves after with Marner and Matthews uh, vis-a-vis Kane and Tavares. Uh, Guys, no commercial breaks this show. Uh, You see the promo at the bottom of the screen. It's going to be available until Monday. Uh, Right now we have an early bird special over at Sports Memo and Wager Talk. uh, Our regular price is $7.95 for the NHL season. You can get it for $5.95 and only for listeners of this show, if you use the promo code NHL100, you get another $100 off of that price, so you can get it for $495. Bucks. Guys, let's get into it. Uh, NHL Central Division, Colorado, Nashville, Winnipeg, Minnesota, St. Louis, Dallas, and the least favored team, the Chicago Blackhawks. Alex, I'm going to go to you first, and you know, Colorado is the favorite here at plus 250. I'm using lines from Bet365. Minnesota Wild are plus 5,000. St. Louis Blues, man, Stanley Cup champions, and not a real overhaul of their team, coming back pretty much intact, are plus 400. Uh, I think this is going to be a very competitive division. I think it's got four playoff teams inside of it, whether it's Colorado, Nashville, Winnipeg or St. Louis, and I think Dallas is going to be um, a team to reckon with as well. I'm going to start with you. Is there any value on any of these teams? Yeah, there's quite a few value. I mean, this is, like I said, a competitive division uh, more often than not. Last year has kind of been an aberration. Uh, The Hawks were kind of, uh, you know, struggled, and that was early in the year when they struggled. They made the change from Quinville to Jeremy Colleton and actually was in the wild card mix for a while. Obviously, we talk about St. Louis. They went from worst to first. Uh, at, you know, January 2nd, they were dead last, and then they move all the way up to toward the top, getting the playoffs. So it's wide open. Uh, You look at, you know, Colorado – uh, you know, struggled at times, but they have, were a young team. They're getting a bit older, uh, you know, and that's the thing you want to look at. You talked about your Toronto Maple Leafs. Those teams that have these young pieces, they're getting a year older. They don't have to make a whole lot of veteran additions because those guys are now coming into their, their own, getting into the prime of their careers. Uh, Minnesota is probably the one team where I would stay away from in the Central. I mean, it's an absolute mess. Paul Fenton, their GM, got fired in the summer after the draft. He's only been there 15 months. They go and get Bill Guerin. Uh, who was a long time with you know player with the Bruins, uh, worked in the Islanders organization for a while. He's got to clean up this mess. Obviously, they can't. They're they're handcuffed with the the cap because they're paying Parise and Suter all this money, seven and a half million dollars for the next six years uh, from that thirteen year deal they signed way back. Uh, they're not going to be able to add a lot of pieces, and they definitely aren't going to be able to trade those guys. Uh, unless there's a team that's at the floor of the salary cap, which you actually do have in this division, Winnipeg, uh, traded away a bunch of defensemen. Dustin Bufflin had to be suspended because he's got personal issues, so that takes them uh, his name off of the cap. It takes his, his contract off, and they're actually at the cap floor, so they might need to make a move for a defenseman, not just because they're shorthanded, losing some guys, but uh, just the fact that they want to stay above the cap where other teams are, 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 are hamstrung with the cap. Uh, Buster, um, well, well, let's just go back to Alex quick. Alex, you know, maybe I didn't hear it, but uh, what team are you going to take here? The team that I'm looking at to win this division is Dallas, the Dallas Stars. I think uh, the additions of Joe Pavelski and Corey Perry, two guys who have been stars forever. Yes, they are getting uh, you know above the hill, but I think the change of scenery 
uh, and having that offensive punch that Dallas desperately needed. We know they got the defense with Ben Bishop. I think the Stars are definitely going to be a team on the rise that should be at the top of the seven. Uh Buster, uh, Alex likes Dallas to win the division at plus 400. And, you know, my take really quickly is I think Nashville is the team to win this division at plus 400, but I think Colorado is the best team in this division. So why don't I think Colorado is the team to win it? Um, the bottom line is they're just a very top-heavy team. I think they have the second-best player in all of hockey and Nathan McKinnon. And I think he's a guy that literally carries this Colorado team more so. Okay, you know, Connor McDavid carries Edmonton. But, I mean, Sidney Crosby has never carried Pittsburgh. Uh, Jonathan Taze has never carried Chicago. Uh, Patrice Bergeron has never carried Boston. All of those guys have got surrounding players. And I think you're in a situation here where... Nathan McKinnon is a true winner, one of the toughest son of a bitches in hockey, end-to-end uh, -end rusher, a guy that puts his team on his back. The problem with that is he can't do it for 82 games. I think this team is going to squeak into the playoffs, but I think they're going to be a good bet to win it all. I just don't think they can sustain an 82-game season with Nathan McKinnon carrying so much weight. Uh, although it pains me to even listen to you talk wearing that butt ugly shirt, what do you like in this division? Uh, <clears throat> I'm actually with both of your picks as far as uh, Alex with Dallas and uh, you, Prez, with Nashville. I actually have a, a future on Nashville to win the Cup at 20-1. to 1. Wow. Um, I, I'm very impressed uh, with what David Paul, GM, uh, did to take a, take a shot. Got rid of P.K. Subban. Opened up some cap room so they could uh, sign uh, Matt Duchesne. And they still have a solid defense with uh, Yossi, Ellis, uh, Matias Eklom. And uh, they've got the the new rookie, that Dante Fabro. And uh, I think there's going to be good things from him uh, this year. And uh, they, uh, this might be uh, Peter Lavrelette's uh, last chance to... Uh, to do something here with with Nashville, and I, I, th I think they've got a, a great even like a good tandem too with uh, Rene and yeah. Soros in the Nets. And a a as we all know, uh, goaltending is just like NFL quarterbacks. You need goaltending to make it to the Cup. You might make it into the playoffs, but you need that goaltending to win that Stanley Cup. And uh, and they, uh, to me, they have a good chance as anybody to uh, to win this. I agree with, uh, as far as uh, with Dallas, uh, they, how bad are they feeling? They lose in double overtime in game seven to the team who wins the cup. Gotta believe the boys are sitting around having a few beers this summer going, geez, if we, that could have been us. Yeah, and there's no reason there's no reason to believe that uh, they can't do it this year, and maybe with a little bit of luck, they'll be all right. I um, I'm going to take a look at my notes. I really like this uh, that Miro Hiskinen on defense. He's going to help them a lot. If Cl uh, Klingberg needs to stay healthy though, if because uh, he was injured last year late, if he stays healthy, Dallas could be very very good. As far as Colorado, I almost think it's like a three way. I know. Uh, uh, Prez, you said you think Colorado just sneaks in. I, I think they more than sneak in. I think they, uh, I think they have what it, uh, what it takes to be there too. It's, it's like the West is so competitive. Yeah. I can make a case for ten teams probably being in the, in the, in those, uh, like fighting for the those eight playoff spots. And uh, with Colorado, they have that that Cole Maker looked great in the playoffs last year. And there's another team that you know they losing game seven and. I mean, they're going to be an up-and-coming team this year, and it wouldn't surprise me to see them fighting uh, Vegas and Nashville for that uh, maybe getting to that Western Conference final. Yeah, and I think Kadri is going to have a big season for Colorado. Uh, the, you know, 17 goals last yeah, year. I agree with that. Sorry, Alex? I agree with that with Kadri. Yeah, he, he's going to have a big season. Uh, guys, before we get into the Pacific Division, I want to stop for a second. Alex, listen, both you and I do NHL. We're both great at NHL. I did not have a good season last year. You broke even. So with 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 all due respect to both of us, I want to just single out uh, Buster. Uh, guys, a lot of you don't know Buster Sports. Uh, Dave has been in this uh, industry, well, since since the Habs won their first cup back in 1823. <laughs> Uh, he is literally as good as it gets in hockey. Uh, 
120 units, give or take, last year in action, uh, in profit. Uh, nobody did better. Carmine was just a hair below you, and I know you and Carmine talk all the time. But yeah, listeners out good, there... Very good to handicapper. Lis listeners out there, I cannot stress enough to buy Buster Sports' NHL season. Forget buying these Monday packages, Wednesday, a week, a month. Just take the plunge and buy Buster's season. He did over a hundred percent return on your money. As I've said on other shows, Warren Buffett would have a multiple orgasm if he could return a hundred percent in a nine, 10 month period. Buster Sports is literally the Warren Buffett of hockey betting. It is $795 for his entire season. Up until Wednesday, it's $595. Plus, if you use the promo code NHL100, you get another $100 off. That's $495 for Buster Sports. You go and bet 20, 30 bucks a unit. So $100 a play. You are going to make thousands of dollars of profit. I cannot stress enough. Buster Sports' NHL season. Buster, if you make 10, and a 10 NHL season packages sold, by the next time you are on the show, you are burning that disgusting, disgraceful shirt. Is that a good deal? Well, I'll tell you right now, Prez, I won't ever burn this shirt but what i will make you a deal when i'm doing this show with you and alex and or carmine uh and mr mcginnis or even mr dave Koken, i will guarantee you i will be not freezing my ass off like you guys will be because i will be in sunny mexico in a condo enjoying oh. life oh, so just let you know that uh i will not wear this because it'll be too hot be too hot to wear. I'm in Canada right now, so it's you know, it's it's raining oh, all day. God. It's miserable. Enough, 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 enough. enough. <laughs> but Prez, I would like I, I appreciate the kind words. And as you know in this business, you're only good as your last bet sometimes. And uh, what I was telling Alex, I think one of the keys that uh, for my success is that I already know December 10th. I know who I'm betting. It's just a matter about numbers and lines for me. It's numbers and lines and situations. So I've already got probably 25 spots on the NHL schedule that I already know I'm betting. Now, if hopefully the odds makers, you know, put out the right line that I'm going to like. But uh, right now, I've already marked those spots. So I already know ahead of time. And, and I think that's a big help with the way I've handicapped all my life. I've been doing this for... 37 38 years like betting hockey of course love hockey can't get enough of hockey i'll be watching three games at a time down there Prez. i've got three t two tvs on my computer all set up it's uh yeah i can't wait for the hockey season and uh, again thank you for the kind remarks alex uh out of everybody that talks hockey does anyone look more like a hockey player than buster that's true. I, maybe Andrew. I, I think no Andrew chance. Look at that mustache. Andrew, Andrew. A little underbite for like, come, hit me in the chin, baby. <laughs> I'll drop my gloves with you Leaf fans anytime. <laughs> and I'll even do exactly. it from Mexico. He, he, he looks like one of the. He looks like one of the young Tor Toronto uh, forwards. Like he might be one of the like one of the Marleys down in the age. Yeah, except he's about <laughs> seventy-five years old. NHL Pacific Division. <laughs> Uh, he's younger than Dave Koken. NHL Pacific Division. Uh, Vegas Knights, Edmonton, LA Kings, San Jose Sharks, the Canucks, the Ducks, they rhyme, Flames and Coyotes. And look, Vegas is minus 105. They're by far uh, the most favored team. They're actually the most favored team to win the division out of all of the divisions. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning right behind them at plus 110. You know, I think we're going to see a much better Vancouver Canucks team, Alex. I think we're going to see a much better Calgary Flames team. Uh, I think we're going to see a better Edmonton team. And I think we're going to see Edmonton with an outside shot of making the playoffs. I can't take the Knights at minus 105. Uh, I'm looking at Calgary here at plus 425. I think this team is very well balanced. I think they've got a good defensive core. I think they're able to move the puck up very well. And as a guy who plays hockey, 
uh, those outlet passes are really outlet passes and faceoffs are the key to, to winning hockey games. And I think uh, Calgary's got uh, some defensemen that can really move the puck well. I mean, obviously not Ben Burns or uh, Carlson, but uh, the Calgary team is six deep on D, and they've got scorers up front. Uh, it's just a matter of whether they're going to get their goaltending in order. But I'm uh, I'm going with Calgary at plus four twenty five. Alex. I really like Vancouver. I, that's one of the point totals that I played. I played them uh, at over uh, 88 and a half. I love the talent that they have. Obviously, Elias Pedersen and Brock Besser, yeah. two of the young dynamic players. But then they add a guy like JT Miller, a uh, guy like Michael Furlan, who can not only get dirty in the corners uh, and willing to drop the gloves, but he can score some goals as well, give you some points. They're loaded. Uh, this team has about six or seven guys that can contribute to scoring every single night. Uh, and you look at the goaltending, Thatcher Themco is now the backup uh, to Jacob Markstrom, two guys that they drafted high uh, a few years ago. Uh, I think these guys will make that step forward and be one of the better goalie tandems in the league. And, and you look at Vegas, the reason I can't back Vegas is the same reason, kind of tie it back with the Central Division, why I'm not backing uh, Colorado in the future. Their number one goalie is the guy they have to ride all the way through. Marc-Andre Fleury, uh, you know, I mean, future Hall of Famer, he's the guy that, you know, he's getting a year older. He's had groin issues. If he goes down, they got to go with Malcolm Subban or Oscar Danks or Garrett Sparks. They're not going to be able to hang around in this tough division all year long. Same thing with Colorado. Once Grubauer, if he goes down, they've got a couple uh, unknown rookies that are backups there that uh, could pose some trouble. So uh, that's why Vegas is, is a stay-away team for me as far as the future goes. But Vancouver, like I said, over in the points total and maybe take a shot with them to, to at least uh, get in the playoffs. I don't know about the division. That would be kind of a, a stretch, but uh, there's some good odds for them to make the playoffs and good odds to go over the point total. Uh, Buster Sports, what do you like in the Pacific Division? Uh, <clears throat> I'm with you, Prez, on, uh, on Calgary. I'm, uh, I'm quite, in, quite impressed with them. They were a real no-show in the playoffs yeah, last Yeah, it was unbelievable. How does that happen, right? They are just, they just didn't, they just didn't show up. I know, like, you know, no offense to Colorado, but they just did not show up. They have five. 20 goal scores with Gaudreau to Chuck. And it was very important that they signed to Chuck to get that mess out of the way. You don't want that hanging over, over the team. Yeah. Yeah, Monaghan, B uh, Bachlin and uh, Lindholm, five goal, five, uh, 20 goal scores. What else I like in it, again, I always go back to about goaltending. They picked up Cam Talbot for a year. Now I know uh, David Riddich played well last year, but they're going to need both of them. Right. And eventually can, Cam Talbot, carry him through a playoff run. The guy can be hot at times, right? But he's uh, he's so hit and miss. So that's the problem there, like I've, I've said with a lot of teams, is goaltending. I totally agree with Alex about Vegas with Flurry. You got to remember, Pittsburgh got rid of Flurry. They didn't they didn't want him, right? And he has been nothing but the best. And uh, just a little side note, we we I always go to Vegas for the first week of March. And I tell you, anybody that has never been to a hockey game, the best. There, you have to go. Prez, I saw some pictures of you when you went there. It's, oh, I've gone every year. It is, I've it's, been to a yep. lot of arenas. It's unbelievable. It's a show. It's a great place. And that's what's keeping Vegas in this and why they've got a, a great team. They have, um, with Stastny, he lost 30 games, I think, last year. If he plays a full year, now Mark Stone's going to get, um, a full year with him this year. And that guy's contagious. He's going to make everybody better. But goaltending is going to be a problem for him. I just, for their sake, I hope Fleury can do it again. I'm not sure if he can. That's the problem. I'm not sure if he can. And like Alex says, then you go to Dankst and Subban and, you know, you're rolling the dice. Yeah. I, I'm with you 100% on, uh, on going to see a game in Vegas. Uh, the sight lines are incredible. The arena is buzzing. Uh, everybody's wearing the, the the colors. The food is good. Uh, it's 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 actually. I've been to tons of uh, Toronto Maple Leaf games. Obviously, I would never go to a Montreal Canadiens game in Montreal. Um, uh, uh, you're missing it, Prez. Yeah, missing it. I, yeah, yeah. Go away. Um, but yeah, Vegas. Vegas is the best arena uh, I've ever been to, uh, with the best uh, atmosphere I've ever seen. Uh, guys, let's talk Western Conference uh, winners. Um, look, obviously, we're, we don't think the Knights are going to win, and they're plus 375. We've both discussed, you both have discussed them in great detail. 
Alex, you're high on Dallas, which is plus 800. I'm high on Calgary, which is plus uh, 900, and Nashville, which is plus 800. Uh, we haven't spoken about the San Jose Sharks at all, um, so let's just start really there, Alex. I mean, what's your take on the Sharks this year? You know, I was high on them last year. I thought adding Carlson late in the camp was going to be the, the final piece to get this team forward, but they had all kind of different issues. I mean, he didn't score. He only scored two goals the whole year, uh, 45 points. Uh, the goaltending was very suspect between Martin Jones and Aaron Dell. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had them as my highest rated uh, goalie duo. They had definitely fell on hard times, so that's something to be worried about now. Evander Kane is very streaky. Obviously, no Joe Pavelski. He was a guy who was really the lifeblood of, of that uh, that franchise for a while. Now Logan Couture takes the reins. He's going to be wearing the captain seat. And then you got old Joel Thornton, who's still trying to hang around and, and you know grab a cup. I mean, he's been around, seems like, 24, 25 years he's playing in the league. And uh, Jumbo Joe, I mean, his, his best days are well past him, and the injuries have, have caught up. I just don't see where this team – I wouldn't be shocked at all if they actually fall out of the wayside and miss the playoffs or just hang around that wild card. Like I said, you got Arizona – uh, improving, Vancouver improving, Calgary still good, and even the Central. Uh, I think the Hawks are going to make another run within the wild card. So there's a <laughs> lot of teams in that yeah. middle of the pack that you know San Jose can find themselves on the outside. We're going to ignore the Hawks remark. Uh, Buster, what about the St. Louis Blues? <laughs> uh, I mean, they, we haven't mentioned the St. Louis Blues this entire show. They're plus 600 to win the conference. They're the Stanley Cup champs. Very, very rare that these teams... Uh, go back to back. It almost never happens. The playoffs is a real long bruising season. I think the St. Louis team is going to come in with a big time hangover. Uh, but as we saw, they could be in last place on January 1st and win it all. Uh, what is your take on this Blues team? Well, uh, Prez, I uh, actually had Boston for the Stanley Cup last year. That must have been my you. That that was my only series loss of the of the whole season, and uh, you know what? You get a guy like uh, Jordan Bennington coming in. He's uh, is he going to be able to do it again? I know they've got Jake Allen, you know, who was a number one, but he, he had some he's had some issues the last few years, so they're, they're counting on that. They did go get Justin Falk for defense uh, just like two days ago, I yeah. believe. So that's going that's going to help him, but. I, I kind of have the mindset like you do, Prez. But here's the problem with St. Louis. They are going to have that target on them all year. And it's going to be a big one because there's going to be so many teams. You've got Vegas who, who blew that game in Game 7. You've got Dallas who lost to them in double overtime. You've got up-and-coming teams like Chicago, Arizona, Vancouver that all want to knock down the champion. And they're, I think they're going to have a hard time because they've got a great team. They remind me of the, the old New Jersey Devils club. Yeah. Right? Just a team, team, team. Great right? point. So and that's how they won. How did New Jersey won tops. No one really stood out. You know, they, they do have Tarasenko, obviously, but I mean, they, they have a, just a great, solid team, but it's tough. Like you said, Press, the NHL, it's grueling. Anybody that's played hockey, you, it's a grueling, grueling battle. Like to win those, to win that cup is just grueling. And I think it's going to take its toll itself. I totally agree with you there, but they do have, a, they have all the pieces in place and you, maybe, maybe they might be a good bet against early. I'm thinking because maybe they do the same thing, like you know, then Barube kind of okay, guys, time to play, let's go, and then you know, so uh, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think they'll be fighting for the last playoff spot. I had them rated fifth in the the I did I rated the whole conference. I had them fifth and basically fighting for a playoff spot. They get in, they could win another cup. Uh, but they could easily just uh, be I think that on the team uh, is going to play to the under all year. I think San Jose, the other team we were talking about, will play to the yeah. over all year. <coughs> um, must have pained a Hams fan to put a bet down on Boston. <laughs> I, you know what? I rode them the whole Stanley Cup to the playoffs, to tell you the truth. Um, it, I, again, as you know, when, you, when what we do yeah. here, you – Unfortunately, what you do, you you bet with your head. You don't bet with your heart. You bet with the numbers. You bet with the situation. And you know what? Yeah, it kills me. But my team, I love my Montreal Canadiens. But you know what? They're going nowhere again. And until that, I almost feel like a Leaf fan back maybe 10 years ago, Prez, when you guys had all kinds of money, all kinds of advantages, and never put just put out a team to, you know, for people yeah, to come watch. the best watch part about it. 
Now at least, the best now part at least about you guys it is you're going to feel like a Leaf fan yeah. from 10 years ago for the next 10 years. Uh, Alex, <laughs> uh, who do you like yeah. to win the conference? I'm rolling with Dallas. Uh, they have the goaltending, uh, veteran leadership at forward. They've got a good mix of uh, youth, especially in defense. Uh, obviously, like I said, with any of these teams, uh, health is a question, but uh, if Bishop can stay healthy, if Klingberg can stay healthy, like Buster mentioned, uh, Dallas should be able to represent uh, the Western Conference. Uh, the Buster, pick one. I've already said who I've, I'm on, and I'm going to go with that. I, I have the Nashville. I think Guys, top point scorer. Year. You know, I like betting this. Um, Connor McDavid is by f- uh, not by far the favorite. Oh. I mean, he's plus 275 with uh, Kucherov at plus 300. Uh, Alex, I don't, Nathan McKinnon at plus twelve hundred looks good to me. I, I think this team is uh, is a bit deeper than it was last year, which will open the ice up a bit for him. Uh, I think with Kadri playing at center, it gives the second line a little bit more power. Um, plus twelve hundred for Nathan McKinnon seems like a good bet. That's pretty decent, and, and you know the thing when you look at a prop like top point scorer. It's kind of tough for me to look at a team where they have to rely so heavily on yep. that, like you mentioned, with a McDavid or Nathan McKinnon. Uh, I would like to look at a team that has other pieces around it uh, that can help facilitate one specific guy night after night. And, uh, you know, obviously a team that I watch all the time would be one of those teams. <laughs> you look at the, at the Blackhawks, I mean, and they have the balance where – Debrinket could be a, a guy that really steps up and leads the team in points. Obviously, Patrick Kane, the guy we've seen win the Art Ross Trophy two years ago. Uh, they, you know, when you have a wealth of talent that can help facilitate where a guy goes on a hot point streak, we saw Kane twenty four uh, straight games with at least one point. Uh, so that's where I would look at value wise for betting a, a spot like that, as opposed to a team where they rely heavily on one guy to score night after night after night. I mean, you're not going to have. Uh, two point per game players. Uh, this isn't the eighties anymore, so you won't have a team. Uh, Buster, are there any from. props that you're betting? Uh, like I said, the only one that I uh, put out was a future with Nashville. I'm I'm not really much of a prop pl- player when it comes to the NHL, but I'm interesting to to know what what's uh, Patrick Line on that. Uh, oh, uh, now I got to go back and look. No, no, don't worry. Sorry, it's all I'm good. Sorry, While know. I'm doing yeah. that. Uh, let's remind everybody to use the promo code NHL100 for $100 off of the season. Uh, Patrick Laine, uh, oh my God, like, I don't even think he's on here, dude. Uh, I'm, oh yes, he's plus okay. 30, plus 3,300. Like- Buster, that's just not going to happen. Uh, the Get problem up. with Patrick Laine is he's a pure goal scorer. He's not going to rack up enough assists to win uh in in uh, that type of a race is it's I, I just i i can't see it man i mean uh, that would that yeah. plus who knows where his his focus is going to be he's got he's got contract yeah. issues with winnipeg as, as well so uh you wonder if he ends up getting dealt possibly uh yeah. if things go haywire so. no i agree with totally because of course i'm gonna i would be on mcdavid if i was going to make this kind of bet i'm always the one guy that's looking for a long shot and and the reason i even just questioned about line a is because i believe the winnipeg jets this year will be the chicago blackhawks of last year they don't have they don't have with the defense that they've lost those three guys on defense and now with Bufflin the trouble they have there they do have a lot of offensive power so you might see them if trying to win yeah. games six four and five three in that and that and that's the only reason yeah, that was so, my thought process Prez I would not I'm just thinking of throwing out an underdog guy instead of just look I think it's very realistic that Liney gets more points than the entire Montreal Canadiens roster combined. But that's still not going to win him the points lead. If you want, if you want a big time underdog to bet to win the points, yeah, I mean he's a, he's uh, a good it's one. Not, he's got pieces around him. But that Alex, help, it's not help only the on. pieces around him. Firstly, he's playing with. He's probably going to play with Kapanen and Johansson, two of the fastest freaking guys in hockey. The key to why Matthews has a real good shot is the other line. There is no team in hockey that has their superstar, their McDavid, their McKinnon on the second line. 
Uh, actually, that's not Patrick true. Patrick Kane is a hundred years <laughs> old. <laughs> the hell are you talking about? <laughs> he's only six. He's only six months Side old. Side bet. <laughs> Side wager alert. <laughs> I should get a screen. Side wager alert. Whoa. Okay, uh, five hundred bucks. Matthews puts up more points than Patrick Kane. You no need odds. There, you need Patrick odds. Kane. Yeah. No, it, no, Patrick Kane is, is is higher than plus four thousand. Patrick Kane is plus thirty three hundred. I should be getting odds. I'll do it straight up. Okay, Alex, one hundred bucks just for fun. <laughs> you know, all right, yeah, I'll take that. We got it. We got it. Okay, okay. I'll take that. Um, Buster, a hundred dollars that the Montreal Canadiens don't make the playoffs. Just send it now. Just PayPal it over now, dude. <laughs> how the well, hell know, that team has not impressive. traded Corey Price is beyond me. Anyway, let's end the show with one last thing. Alex, who's winning the Stanley Cup and why? You know, I'll go with the Dallas Stars. Like I mentioned before, the, the goaltending depth, the scoring depth. Uh, it would be a great way to see uh, Corey Perry probably into his career if they if they go on and win the cup. Uh, I could see him hanging it up there, like you said. Uh, yeah, I'm look. I look for Dallas Stars to to make that run. If you can survive the Central Division, you can pretty much get through anything uh, in the NHL. Plus so seventeen hundred at Bet three sixty five Buster Sports, excluding Montreal, because you know I want I want to allow you to choose another team. Uh, who's going to win the Stanley Cup? Okay, I know it's not in this conference, uh, but I will uh, go with Tampa Bay. I know they're the favorite, but uh, my uh, my philosophy basically is that they're they're going to remind me of the Virginia Cavaliers in college basketball, where they oh, got beat great, out that great first call. round of the 16th seed, mm -hmm. and they after getting beat the way they got beat. I know they're going to win the President's Trophy. I'm not sure what the odds are on that. They're 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 out for that. They just. Uh, I don't know. I just think it's going to be one of those things that they're not going to let that happen this year, what happened last year. And they'll have a pretty easy way to go to the to win the East. They will have a very tough way, whoever comes out, whether it be Nashville, whether it be Dallas, whether it be Vegas, it's going to be a great Stanley Cup. But I think Yeah, Tampa so Bay's I have a bet. Uh, I have a $100 bet, 13-1 uh, to one on the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're now 9-1. to one. And look, I know I'm a homer. I get it. I'm a huge Mont uh, Toronto Maple Leaf fan. I get it. I really feel like they're going to win the cup, and I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you why not from the perspective of being a homer. I don't think there is a team that is even close in forward depth to this team. I mean, when Zach Hyman comes back, you're going to have the first line of Hyman, Tavares, and Marner. Your second line is going to be Kapanen, Johansson, and Matthews. We still have Nylander to find, to be to place in there. They have Jason Spezza, who is old and can barely move, but an incredible power play addition. A guy who will stand in the slot. He plays the right side. They have specifically moved Marner to the left on the power play. Uh, they have the best defenseman in all of hockey, regardless of the fact that he didn't win the Norris last year, which was utterly ridiculous. In Morgan Riley, put up a bloody Bobby Orr type season. Their 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 goaltender is good enough. Um, Muzzin is there. Barry is there. Um, I look at Tampa Bay and. I mean, they are top heavy. Uh, I, I grant you, Stamkos, Kucherov, this team is top heavy. They got a good defense. They skate like the wind. Uh, they got an incredible goalie. And I think the only problem really for Boston, Toronto, and Tampa Bay to win the Stanley Cup is one of those teams have to beat two of the other ones. And I think that's where it's going to get tough. But I really, truly feel... Like, this is the Leafs' year for those reasons and one more. Half their team are free agents next year. This is the last look at the Montreal, at the Toronto Maple Leafs, the way they are. And I think as a result, and especially with pretty decent prospects on their farm team, I think we're going to see a big trade at the trade deadline for a rock-solid defenseman um, to help them, to help that cause. 
So my attitude is uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs at nine to one is my bet. Uh, Alex, do you want to leave us with anything? Um, I mean, one of my top point total plays, uh, you know, you have your homer play with, with Toronto. I'm going to go with my Hawks to go over 90 and a half points. Uh, we saw them get to 81 last year, like I said, with the coaching change. They've got a better backup goalie now in Robin Lehner, uh, even though he is kind of dealing with the injury to start the year. Uh, Dominic Kublik is a guy that you'll want to watch if you're a fantasy hockey player. This guy's got some real talent. He's on the third line as of right now. He might get moved up to the second line. Uh, that has Kane, that has Debrinket. So there's a lot of wealth of talent here. They could sneak under the radar, get back in the playoffs as a wild card, and they could disrupt some things because they've got a lot of veteran uh, presence there. You know, they, some of those guys. Are Buster Sports, Kelly. talk to me. Hmm. Okay, I'm. I'm just going to talk about. Um, so there's a. There's a ton of rule changes that they're going to try to, that they're doing this year to make it more offensive. So um, what I, what I'd just like just to help maybe help the guys out there watching that are making their bets. The one rule change that uh, that could make a difference. I'm not too sure if it will, but what's happening now is that the team is allowed. So out of these four instances, I'm going to read them off. Follow a icing. Uh, now there's a, a rule where if the puck's shot in and the goaltender holds it from the red line. Uh, that the defense come up, can't come off the ice as well. Uh, if a defensive player uh, dislodges the net, the, the face-offs in that zone, and then uh, the first face-off off the power play. What's happening there is that the team, the offensive club, is allowed to pick which face-off circle they want to drop the puck in. Now, it's going to be you know a C to watch and see what happens, right? But it could help. With uh, with totals, it could help with you know as guys like you have the right defense on the right you know certain guys like to uh, yeah. have that right face off thing. So it's very interesting that they've done that. Also, I just want everybody to look at uh, in January the teams have a five day mandatory uh, week that they have to take off, and I, I often look at that kind of stuff and just you know you might find some nice situations there depending on coming in on win streaks or losing streaks or or what have you. So. Just for everybody out there that's watching this, just just take a look come January when these teams have the mandatory five day uh, day layoff. That's so a good point. A and there's, there's also uh, not a lot of long road trips. The longest road trips for most teams is five or six games. The the league has really done a good job of spreading things out, and where teams are only on the road maybe three or four games. So uh, a lot of those. Uh, you know, back home off of a long road trip situations won't be around. Like uh, he's Alex B. Smith. The other guys, Buster Sports. Uh, Alex B. can be found at sportsmemo.com. Buster at Wager Talk. You get $100 off of their NHL season package. Use the promo code NHL10. Uh, guys, we start next Wednesday. I'll send out the schedule. I'm super excited. Uh, Alex, I will not be around on Thursday or Friday. Uh, I'm heading down to Vegas for some business okay. meetings. Uh, we got to talk offline, uh, set you up, but whenever I'm not around, you will uh, handle the hosting duties of puck time. Everybody, thanks so much for listening. That was the Western Conference Preview Show. Uh, Carmine Bianco and Andrew McGinnis for the Eastern Conference Preview Show, in which I will do a hell of a lot less talking uh, other than bothering Carmine, because he'll probably be wearing a <laughs> Buffalo Sabre jersey. Uh, I'm the Prez. <laughs> Gentlemen, let every puck bounce our way. Cheers. Thanks, Press.